a very, very good morning to you all and happy Easter. So lovely to see you here as we celebrate the risen Lord Jesus. A couple of notices before we start. Before we start. Uh, there's tea and coffee afterwards. No, no tea? Ah, no, it's if anyone can help set up tables for tomorrow. Is that right, Yvonne? Setting up tables tomorrow, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Sorry, I've um, misled you there. Great news to share with you all. Jean Pickering has become a great grandmother for the first time. So congratulations, Jean. That's wonderful news. Many congratulations. So we will start by singing our first Easter hymn, 205, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please sit as we prepare our hearts and minds to worship the God who loved us so much to send his son to die on the cross for us, but not to stay on that cross to conquer sin and death and rise again. And on page one we say together, Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us new hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ died to sin once for all. And now he lives to God. Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Let me just pause. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. 
We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we respond to God's forgiveness by standing to say the Gloria together. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect for this Easter day. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death, to make all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, all praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. So please sit for our reading from Acts. <coughs> A reading from the book of Acts. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. And we stand to sing again hymn number 193, All Heaven Declares the Glory of the Risen Lord. <laughs>
you remain standing for the gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they've laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciples who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Why are you weeping, woman? She said to them, They've taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they've laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there. But she didn't know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that, she, and she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we stand, let's pray. Gracious risen Lord, on this Easter day, bring your word to us afresh and let it stir up inside of us a witness to your forgiveness your love and your glory for all the world to see in jesus name we pray amen please take a seat now i don't know whether it's ever too early to have a uh, a chocolate breakfast anyone had chocolate already no? oh well done well done well it is lovely to see Easter eggs around. I mean, it's, it's a nice thing. It's, we, we've got this whole symbolism of new life, and that is right at the heart of the gospel message, this new life that we have in Jesus Christ. What's gone before has gone. What awaits us is new and vibrant and with God. And... 
Well, I thought it's time I cracked into this one. Now, the thing is, I'm looking in there and I'm seeing not a lot. It's an empty egg. I deliberately bought it as an empty egg for a reason. Because I, if somebody had given me that, and I didn't realize it was an empty one, and I cracked into it, I might, with some of these eggs, expect a whole load more goodies to just pour out. You know, the eggs that have lots of the extra sweets in? Now, I would imagine how, well, you can imagine how I might be feeling if I was given an egg and I was expecting something inside, but when I cracked into it, there was nothing. Puzzlement? Disappointment? I might feel robbed, particularly if I bought it myself. But the whole idea is, we could see that as quite a negative. And for me, that's an illustration of what Mary did when she looked into the tomb. She saw that stone rolled away. She looked into the tomb and it was empty. It was not what she was expecting. So we can start to maybe imagine it in our minds what Mary was going through. To view that emptiness where she was expecting something. Sadness, puzzlement. She would have been distraught. We know she was weeping. And in some way in our own lives, we can ourselves look on emptiness in its many forms. And it can be very challenging. And the empty tomb would have posed so many questions. Well, where is Jesus? Where had they taken his body? Who might have taken it? And Mary, thinking that the gentleman nearby her was the gardener, supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've laid him, and I will take him away. The empty tomb started off as something very challenging. But in the end, the empty tomb turned out to be the most amazing thing to view ever. Mary went and got the two disciples and they verified, they testified to the empty tomb as well. But they went on back and Mary stayed. And it's interesting that it wasn't Jesus' appearance. It was his voice that she recognized. So if we're ever in a position of looking into emptiness and it being challenging, let's take a leaf out of Mary's book. She stayed. She stayed and she waited. When we experience emptiness, we tend to rush around filling it. And by and large, as human beings, we tend to fill it often with things that may not be the most beneficial. Physically, spiritually, emotionally, we tend to pack in things if there's the sign of emptiness just creeping in because it's uncomfortable. But Mary waited, and I think that's something important that we can do, to wait for the Lord to speak to us if we're feeling empty. But notice this, when she waited, and in her distress, the angels also spoke to him. And this tells us that while we wait for the Lord's voice, we are surrounded by so many people wanting to support us. And as she waited, she heard the voice of the Lord. 
And I don't think this would have ru happened had she been rushing around to fill and try and make sense of what was going on and pack into her life things because she couldn't understand the emptiness. But as we heard read, her emptiness, her puzzlement was rewarded by hearing the Lord's voice. And that voice brought her to the realization that Jesus Christ had risen. And in the same way, as we wait for the Lord, we hear his voice. And that voice is one of victory. It's one of triumph. Sin over death. Sin and death have been defeated. We have new life. And Jesus also got Mary to do the first bit of evangelism. She said, you go and go and tell the disciples what you have seen, who you have seen. What a privilege for Mary to be able to say, I have seen the risen Lord. So for me, when I look on emptiness, particularly the emptiness of the tomb, I see that as far from negative as it can possibly be. For me, it is the most positive thing ever, that empty tomb. If it wasn't empty, we wouldn't be here today. The fact that that tomb was empty and Jesus has risen from the dead is a sign for us that we can accept that. The empty tomb is a sign of new hope. The resurrection of Jesus in conquering sin and death, those things that weigh us down with guilt can be removed because of the empty tomb. Now they say most sermons are heinous acts of plagiarism and I make no um, no apology for this because there's a, a writer Melvin Morgan who wrote and I've paraphrased some of it he's written a whole list and I'll give you a copy on the way out about the empty tomb and what that empty tomb means for us this Easter but I'll read some because of an empty tomb, I know that he walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. Because of an empty tomb, I can be whatever God wants me to be. Because of an empty tomb, with Christ, all things are possible. Because of an empty tomb, I'm not guilty. Because, I'm an em because of an empty tomb, I am not a failure, even if I failed in the past. Because of an empty tomb, I am more than a conqueror. Because of an empty tomb, I can break the strongholds that once held me down. Because of an empty tomb, I know my prayers are heard. Because I, of an empty tomb, I am redeemed out of the hand of the devil. And because of an empty tomb, my sins are forgiven. I hope this Easter you will think on what that empty tomb means for your life. The fact that it is empty. Christ has not been shackled by the chains of death, which we would have been. And because of that empty tomb, we can say, Alleluia, he is risen. So happy Easter again.
So we stand to say the creed on page four in our booklet. So let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appealed to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Alleluia. Amen. So please sit for our prayers of intercession. When you hear the words, Lord, let your empty tomb, if you'd like to make the prayer your own, please respond with, remind us of your love. Lord, let your empty tomb remind us of your love. Because of an empty tomb, with Christ, all things are possible. Father, the needs of the world seem impossible to solve at the moment. We see injustice, poverty and fear wherever we look. There are so many conflicts and many want to blame religion for conflict. Father, please bring peace, particularly to Ukraine and Russia and to the Middle East. The stone of war lay heavy across the tomb, but your love makes all things possible. Lord, let your empty tomb remind us of your love. Because of an empty tomb, I am not guilty. Father God, we bring to you those who are weighed down by past guilt. Those known to us and those not known to us, but very dear to you. May the empty tomb be a symbol to them of your deep love and compassion. May anyone struggling with guilt be freed through your resurrection power and able to grow into the person you want them to be. The stone of guilt lay heavy across the tomb, but your love makes all things possible. Lord, let your empty tomb remind us of your love. Because of an empty tomb, I can be whatever God wants me to be. Lord God, we think of those who are children and still developing into who you want them to be. We pray for the children in our benefice, those in Axbridge and Shipham First Schools, in Fairlands and Sexes and in Kings of Wessex. May they know your love and so have the confidence and faith to grow into your purpose for them. We pray too for those involved in helping them to develop, their parents or carers, and all those involved in working in education. Father, may those who are being downtrodden through abuse, through poverty, through lack of opportunity, have the chance to develop fully. The stone of obstacles lay heavy across the tomb, but your love makes all things possible. Lord, let your empty tomb remind us of your love. Because of an empty tomb, I can break the strongholds which once held me down. Father God, there are so many strongholds which still hold people down. Help us to work together to break those strongholds in each other, in our churches, and in our communities. May our community be one which reflects your amazing love. Often we need help to break strongholds. Help us to support those in our community to break anything which wants to have a stronghold over us. The stone of strongholds lay heavy across the tomb, but your love makes all things possible. Lord, let your empty tomb remind us of your love. Because of an empty tomb, I am redeemed out of the hand of the devil. Lord, we know there are powers of evil, but your love has conquered all. We pray that those who are gripped with indifferent sorts of sin will be freed and will know the strength and power of your love. 
the stone of evil lay heavy across the tomb, but your love makes all things possible. Lord, let your empty tomb remind us of your love. Because of an empty tomb, I know I am somebody. Healing Lord, we bring to you all who are struggling and feeling overwhelmed, spiritually, physically and mentally. Those who don't believe they're anybody. We bring to you all those we know who are ill, those on our prayer list and those known only to you. Father, please heal them and restore them to full health. The stone of being nobody lay heavy across the tomb, but your love makes all things possible. Lord, let your empty tomb remind us of your love. Because of an empty tomb, I know my prayers are heard. Father, we thank you so much for your amazing love and for it opening the way to have a relationship with you. We thank you so much for sending your son even to death out of love. Help us to take that love forward into our lives this week. The stone of being lost lay heavy across the tomb, but your love makes all things possible. Lord, let your empty tomb remind us of your love. Amen. Please, would you stand? The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. And they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. So let us offer one another a sign of God's peace. standing to sing hymn number 209, Love's Redeeming Work is Done.
on page five. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus, our risen high priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth, giver of life and conqueror of death. By his death on the cross, your son Jesus Christ offered the one true sacrifice for sin, breaking the power of evil and putting death to flight. Through his resurrection from the dead, you have given us new birth into a living hope, into an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled and unfading. The joy of the resurrection renews the whole world, while the choirs of heaven sing forever to your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please sit. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. Send your Spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, raised again with Christ in the power of the Spirit, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. Lamb of God, 
you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Before we give out communion, just, if you're visiting, we have a way of doing it here. We have two chalices for the wine. This one here on my right is the shared chalice. If you'd like to sip from that, you will just be given a wafer, and we ask that you make your way to this side. Take your bread first, and then sip from the chalice. For those who don't want to use a shared chalice, we have another one, and um, is it, who's, who's dipping? Mike uh, will dip the wafer for you and give it to you, and then you line up on this side. Anyone who loves the Lord Jesus is welcome to his table. If you would like a blessing, just bring up your service booklet and keep your head bowed, and Mike will give you a blessing. Unfortunately, because of my treatment, I can't come up close to you, unfortunately, so um, I'm very grateful that Mike, Judith, and Mary will be handing out communion on my behalf. there is gluten free if you need it thank you
Let us pray. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of the enemy, grant us so today to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together on page eight. You have opened to us the scriptures, O Christ, and have made yourself known in the breaking of bread. Abide with us, we pray, that blessed by your royal presence, we may walk with you all the ways of our life, and at its end behold you in the glory of the eternal Trinity, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our final hymn is hymn number 197, Alleluia, Alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. before we depart with words of God's blessings, I think it would be highly cruel of me to wave all this chocolate in front of you without you having the opportunity. So I'll take this there, please dig into it on your way out. But also I've been told there are Easter eggs around the church, so please, we don't, much as we love the mice, we don't want them feeding on the chocolate, so please do your best to find the Easter eggs. So let's go with God's blessing. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, 
open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love and pray for this Easter day and this season and always. Amen. Amen.